Well, I guess I'm no longer monogamous. Okay, that was a bad joke for this video. <laughs> and I do apologize. However, what I do mean is that I'm going to be working on multiple projects, sort of. Well, yes, but also no. We are all very aware of how indecisive I have been recently. Okay, more like seven months, but you win some, you lose some. I have been oscillating between projects, listlessly trying to figure out what exactly I want to do now that I have finished my fourth draft of the wrath king so since i've been void of a direction and all of us are tired of that me at the top of that list but i'm sure the rest of you are there because damn is it boring to hear me talk about that and so i was dramatically complaining to wallace and Devesha. i literally do this all the time i don't know how they put up with me and wallace suggested that i work with my brain as opposed to against it like i had been recently with my writing routine and lovely wallace suggested that i steal a concept from her channel from her chocolate short stories series if you haven't already watched this videos I highly recommend them I will link a playlist down below so you can go and binge them after you finish this video so I propose a writing experiment I have taken four different projects in four different stages of development and I've decided I'm gonna rotate through them I know you're thinking to yourself Katie that sounds like a terrible idea listen to the rest of the rules for my writing experiment before you go and hop in the comments and tell me that because I did in fact think this through I know wild concept me thinking through shit didn't think it was gonna happen. Luckily I have Wallace and Devesh to kick my ass. Why is my hair so dark in this lighting? It looks like brown. I swear to god my hair is red. And since I have the tendency to hyper fixate and work on things in a flurry and then drop them and throw them to the side, I've added an element of chance. A roulette each day to keep my monkey brain satisfied and so I don't have to actually make decisions for myself or stick to a strict routine. We love actually working with our neurodivergent brains. What is this experiment you ask? Just get the fuck on with it Katie. For the next 75 days starting tomorrow September 17th if you're watching this the day it comes out and if not it started September 17th 2021. I'll be rotating and working through four different projects and every morning I will take my, my bowl, bowl of fate. fate. The bowl of fate. Bowl of fate. Oh my god, I almost dropped it. That would have been horrible, but also could have been good content. Or I suppose it's actually an egg of fate. I made this in college. I went to a pottery class thing um, and just painted it. I didn't actually like pottery this with my own hands. I just painted it and glazed it myself. And it was previously a jewelry holder because, you know, dragons. dragons. Shiny things. shiny things. Skins, you know, they like to board board shiny things. Anyway, not the point of this video. Move on, Katie. And so each morning when I'm ready to start my work for the day, I will reach into the bowl and withdraw a slip. And whatever project is written on that slip is the one that I will work on for that day. And that's sticky because it's supposed to know. However, I do have two exceptions. Number one, I have five break days that I must take. Hello, editing Katie here to tell you that I messed up my math. Are we surprised? No, we really should not be surprised that my math is messed up. So turns out I will actually have seven days off a full week because apparently I can't divide 75 by four. Yeah, apparently can't do that. Anyway, have to No, like I've only put 70 slips in here. So five days I cannot work. Obviously, I don't have any super hardcore goals. So if there is a day where I'm feeling down, but don't want to take that break, I can still pick something and I can work on it a little bit and then just not do anything else on it. It's really flexible. I'm not gonna be holding myself to like, you have to work this many hours on a project. And there's not really gonna be any way to like quantify how I work each day because again, each of these projects is in a different state of development. And I don't really want that pressure of having to conform to an idea of what I'm actually doing and actually proving that I'm working. This is more of just a way for me to work on multiple projects and not feel paralyzed by the fact that I have so many projects I want to work on all at the same time and so I'm not working on any of them. So you can modify this and your goals as you want. So the entire point of is that my indecision is solved and I don't have to make a decision on any given day. I literally just have to pick a slip and it is up to the fate's hands which one I pick and I work on it. That simple. So I've written each project's name 17 times. It did take a while, here's a time lapse. Super simple. Wow, it's almost like this is really an easy, not really experiment. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of, 75 days is a lot. So you may be wondering, Katie, why did you pick 75 days? Well, it's 75 days until December 1st, which means this project is going to be running through NaNoWriMo. I'm just getting a head start and starting early and working on a bunch of projects. Hence the monogamy joke that was terrible at the beginning of this video. 
Hello, voiceover Katie here to give you the lowdown on my author journal. This is another idea that was stolen from Wallace because apparently I've never had an original thought. Just kidding, she totally told me that I should do this and she actually suggested it because she said it really helped her when she was juggling multiple projects. So what I did is I got these really nice notebooks. I will link them down on Amazon and get two for 21, which I think is a pretty good price for these large notebooks. And there's like 200 and some pages. I've been using this notebook as a bullet journal since January and I really like them. So I'm using it for my author journal. Let's start talking about the first project, which is be gay and solve crime. Not to be confused with be gay and do crime. That's a different book entirely, but. <laughs> Anyway, Be Gay and Solve Crime is my self-indulgent vampire novel. It is an 1890s inspired murder mystery fantasy with a queer private detective vampire who is trying to solve a serial killer murder mystery while she also deals with a bunch of other shit that's happening. You know, spoilers, so not gonna get too much into that. This was my NaNoWriMo 2020 project. I have a bunch of videos about it. If you would like to go watch them, I'll leave them linked down below. It is the most recent book that I've written and drafted, and I literally haven't looked at it in a while. Last week, I decided to outline it again. Uh, so I actually had a physical copy on my computer, on my Google Docs, and so I could actually look at all of the plot points and pieces and see what is actually happening. So this one is going to be my revision process. So for the author journal, I have put pretty much the same things for each one of my projects and I just divided it evenly in the four. I hope I did the math right on it. If I didn't, oh well, it's off by like one or two. Anyway, I had a really fun time crafting <laughs> the um, aesthetic, I guess, of this author journal. It was a lot of fun to do. I haven't written down my goals yet because I'm not entirely sure what I want my goals to be. I think I will figure that out later. did a tracker, a comp title tracker, and a bunch of things to help me keep track of everything that has to do with this project since I am trying to be more organized with my stuff. Since I'm gonna be revising, I have sectioned out half a page per chapter and I'll be writing down the points and stuff that I wish to change or plot points that are there development wise that I need to carry through, all those kinds of things. I like being able to write down things tactilely. I think it helps me think better and piece the story together better. So I did that. Uh, haven't filled that out yet. Obviously, when I that'll be my first step in the revision process. <laughs> it's gonna be a pain in the ass, but, but ultimately the story will be better for it. And with every section, I do have a brain dump. So if I wanna put extra ideas or plots and ideas or lines, more pictures, that sort of thing, I can. I can just throw it in the brain dump section. I've already been working on the second book in this series, so I'd probably brain dump all of my stuff back into there uh, eventually. <laughs> The next project is one that is near and dear to my heart, and that is the second book to The Wrath King. I'm currently querying the first book, The Wrath King, obviously. So I'm gonna start working on the second book and create a strong and in-depth outline for it. I've been calling it The Wrath King 2, Electric Boogaloo, just cause it's funny and someone in the comments or chats of a live stream said it and I thought it was hilarious and I've been going with it ever since. The aesthetics of this world are interesting to me. Um, I could probably make an entire video about the aesthetics of The Wrath King. I should probably make an actual video about The Wrath King itself. Um, <laughs> since the last one I made was really old um, and a lot has changed. So that video is basically out of date, but yeah, I am going to be working on a really vigorous outline, basically really outlining this book so I know everything that's gonna happen so I can carry through all those plot threads and make sure I don't miss anything in the first book because if I get an agent, obviously they're probably gonna wanna know what the second book is since it is a duology. It just makes sense that way. So that's why I'm working on this. And just like with the other one, I have my goals, my tracker, my comp title tracker because I'm still looking for comp titles for this because gosh, is it hard to find comp titles. Ugh. And then I have a whole section for an outline and of course brain dump. This is a project that I won't be drafting anytime soon Obviously unless I get an agent and a book deal like ASAP and they want me to start working on it Which hasn't happened and you know Probably won't happen for a while, but I just want to be prepared and have this kind of set and so I am ready to write it uh, eventually, you know so I have something to go off of and show people and so I can work on it and so I can have a completed duology, essentially an outline, obviously, but yeah. The third project is one that I talked about last year before NaNoWriMo. I was originally gonna be working on this project as half of my NaNoWriMo with uh, Be Gay and Solve Crime. However, I ended up just completely writing Be Gay and Solve Crime. And so I abandoned it momentarily uh, until now where I'm digging it back up and I'm gonna be outlining it. So this is my Wild Wild Western story, The Shadows Have Teeth. That is not the final title. I just really like that and it kind of fits. It's fantasy, it has demons and such, but it is set in our world and it is set in the Old West, but the town itself is 
been kind of frozen and so it's not connected to the outside world but things have moved people have grown up people have grown old there have been times it's you know it's not quite like frozen frozen like it's not completely frozen in 1887 but it kind of is it's a novel about cults curses demons uh, family, friends, finding yourself, queer identity. Obviously, it's a book by me. <laughs> For me, it's a very personal book. Uh, there's a lot of talking. It's how you describe it as my philosophical book, which is funny that it's my Wild Western book and it's my philosophy book. It's not super action-packed and it's more about the consequences of actions and how those actions have ripple effects. So I'm really excited to kind of dive into the outlining and the nitty-gritty and actually put down what I want in this story. And it's gonna be really exciting because the story's been in my head for literally years. If you kind of want to know what the comp titles of this, it's Winona Ur meets Stranger Things. So that's the shadows have to eat. Obviously, I have my goals, my trackers, my comp titles, and then my outline pages as well as my brain dump. Again, it's exactly like the Wrath King 2 electric boogaloo in the setup of the author journal pages. And finally, our fourth and final project is my Nora Roberts fan fiction. <laughs> I know that sounds weird. Listen, let me try to explain. Basically, when I was younger, I used to be obsessed with the TV movie versions of Nor some of Nora Roberts' books. I watched them religiously. The one that this is based off of is Angel's Fall, which is a thriller murder mystery, but I really, really loved it. And I watched that movie obsessive compulsively. Like, I don't even know if you can find it anywhere to watch anymore. It was literally on the Hallmark Channel, I think, or, you know, Oxygen. Anyway, this is my gay murder town book. <laughs> And this book is essentially follows beat for beat Angel's Fall. Literally follows beat for beat. I completely ripped the outline. I already have this book outlined. I already have all the characters figured out. It's not that difficult. I literally have the blueprint in the form of the book. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nora Roberts, please don't sue me. I have no intention of publishing this book and it's my own spin on it with my own characters. And I will be going more in depth with this in a future video. Do not worry. I will be doing a tell-all about everything that's in this book and my entire process of writing it and all of the things that go along with it. This book is a very quiet book. It has a lot of the murder mystery cozy elements. I'm really looking forward to describing the scenery and the mountains and the snow and there's going to be the snowed in trope and you know tiny town secrets and one of the main things that is a big deal in this book is gaslighting girl boss gatekeep gaslight just kidding but kind of that's kind of like the whole plot anyway <laughs> Um, I'll explain more about the plot in a future video. So I have basically the same, once again, goals, tracker, are we surprised? But I also have my word count tracker, which I spent a really long time trying to set up and figure out how I could work it. Um, essentially, I'm gonna be trying to write 2K every day that I have one of these things. I may or may not make it, who knows? So 34K in the end of 17 days doesn't feel half bad. I don't know how long this book's gonna be. It literally is kind of gonna low-key be fanfiction. I, <laughs> this is so ridiculous. I don't know. <laughs> I've literally like mapped out like an entire town of people and like want to kind of make this a series of like murder mysteries with like romance. They're like romance murder mysteries. <laughs> what is my life come to? <laughs> I do have a section for the outline. I've already written down the outline in a separate notebook. I'm just going to transfer it here so I have it so I can look at it even though I know that outline and plot front to back. Um, I just can't remember if I changed anything. I might have, you know, maybe I had an original thought while doing this. Who knows? And yeah, then I have a brain dump where I just put all of my brain dumpy things. And yeah, that's the entire author journal for this project, for the 75 Days of Madness, and for everything going forward. Obviously, I'll continue to use this past the 75 days, and it'll be really nice to have this so I can write down stuff and I just have it all in one place, because I tend to just write things on scraps of paper or in different notebooks or in my burnt bullet journal, and then I can never find it. So at least now I will have places for at least four of my projects. My God, I have so many more of them though. Narrowing it down to four was almost impossible. So yeah, welcome to the 75 hard writing challenge with the bowl of fate. <laughs> Again, this is just a challenge for me and this is gonna be what my content is for the next 75 days. I will be doing vlogs for this and I will be doing a bunch of fun stuff with it. So yeah, that's my writing experiment. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're ready for a lot of vlog content because I know it's been famine on the vlog content on my channel. So be ready for that. I also have a new camera for vlog content. So gonna be getting some pretty nifty things. I'll see you guys all next week where I will either have regretted my decision to do this or I will be thinking that uh, Wallace and Devasher are geniuses for helping me do this. Bye!